Okay, so coming back for second semester now, one of the things that we want to shift our attention to is Christian thought. Really what we're talking about here is theology. We've been doing philosophy. Now we're doing a little bit of Christian thought, um, which is decidedly theologically focused instead of sort of philosophically focused. However, uh, we want to dialogue between the, the elements of philosophy that we've already sort of got a grip on and the issues in Christian theology. Oftentimes, because our Christian theologians are coming from secular contexts, worldly contexts, uh, contexts in which they know some of these philosophers that we've looked at, especially Plato and Aristotle, uh, some of the Romans like Cicero and Seneca and some of these individuals, uh, because they've been trained and taught that as classical education, what we see as Christian thought in theology actually sort of takes from and uses some of the ideas and some of the expressions uh, that we've seen existent in philosophic thought. So we're going to get ourselves introduced here uh, in today's session uh, by, by looking at some historically key individuals. We're going to start and kind of walk our way through um, a, a rather big picture historical overview. Um, there are going to be some pretty big leaps that we make in this series of screencasts. Um, so we're going to start really early on, guys like Justin Martyr and Irenaeus, uh, and then we'll move uh, along rather quickly. And yes, there are going to be some, some leaps in there. We'll make up for some of those leaps in, in our class discussions. I want this to really be a good supplement for you and a good way for you to begin relating the information we're getting in our um, in our theology now with the philosophy that you should be relatively familiar with. So uh, a bit of a historic introduction to some of these uh, key Christian thinkers as they begin to intersect with, um, with, our, with our philosophies. So um, we start with sort of orthodoxy and apology. Um, Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, and Origen. Uh, three key thinkers for our Christian context. Um, orthodoxy is uh, right belief. Um, that's kind of how we define it. It's um, basically the, the, the church's teaching that um, they, would, they would declare uh, through the councils and various things like that to be sort of proper Christian theology, key ideas like the Trinity the ideas like the, the person and nature and work of Jesus Christ, like his full humanity and his full divinity. These kind of ideas become orthodox, right Christian thinking, right Christian thought, right theology. Uh, and we really know those in conflict with other things. But before we get into orthodoxy, let's talk about some of this apology uh, by beginning with Justin Martyr. Um, Justin Martyr established a school in Rome... Uh, to train and equip Christians in the faith. Now, he's got a sort of classic philosophical educational background, and so he knows his uh, contemporary philosophies. Uh, he writes a couple of different works um, that are incredibly important to his establishing this kind of apology or defense. Uh, the first of those works is um, Apologia, which is the Greek word for defense, uh, or a word of defense, right? Logia, logos, they, they, they share context there. Um, so apology, or apologia, is his, is his first work um, in a defense of the Christian faith. Now, one of the things that Justin Martyr is primarily concerned with is the, the validity, as far as its rationale, of... Christian theology. Um, one, he's trying to make a point that just because Christians believe certain things, they are not sort of irrational or crazy or they've, they've sort of gone off the deep end. That, that is exactly the opposite. What he argues is actually that his, his Christian theology and, and properly understood what Christian belief and Christian faith and Christian theology teaches is actually rational. It makes the most sense. In addition to his, um, his work in the Apology, he writes uh, another piece entitled The Dialogue with Trifo, where he's issuing a defense 
uh, back and forth in a, uh, in a dialogue with uh, a Jewish individual by the name of Trifo. And so in the Apology, he's working against uh, sort of Roman or Greek, uh, what we might call secular philosophy. But in dialogue with Trifo, what he's working against is uh, embedded Judaism, as it were. Um, he's, arguing, he's arguing that Christianity is, uh, is right as sort of the fulfillment of all of the things that were promised in ancient Israelite and Jewish religion. So, Ir Irenaeus, sorry, it, Justin Martyr is one of our first individuals, um, and probably the first, to set down academically and go ahead and make clear what he thought uh, in a defense of Christian faith from a rational standpoint, and he's he's aiming that at a couple of uh, a couple of groups, not individuals, a couple of groups, primarily the Jews on the one hand, that the Christians grew out of, and now he's arguing back that listen, Christianity is legitimate for these reasons, even though we began with Judaism and uh, the Old Testament, right, the the Hebrew Bible, as um, as a context for this, so. Then, on the other side, he's arguing against secular or non-Christian philosophies. He's trying to make a philosophical and a, and a rational defense for Christian faith. And so his work is really about standing on the shoulders of those who have established rationality and arguing that Christian faith is just as rational. Okay? Now, you're going to do a little bit of digging into one of these three characters, Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, and Origen. And so I'm leaving open for you some of uh, the background of their thought. Really what you need to know for Justin is, he's, is that he's trying to make this rational, reasoned out, very clear painting, very clear picture that Christianity is not an irrational religion. It actually makes the best sense of all of the philosophy that we can know as it stands. And so he's arguing in defense of the Christian faith, against philosophies. One, the sort of secular philosophy of his day, just to recap, and then the, the Jewish, uh, Jewish thought or Jewish religion, uh, Judaism, for example. Irenaeus, on the other hand, is, is a little bit later, and he's primarily concerned with heresy. Now, the word heresy is uh, derived from the Greek word for choice. So really what we're talking about here when we talk about heresies uh, we're, we're talking about those individuals who made a different choice about their belief concerning, concerning what we would probably refer to as critical Christian doctrine. Okay, so by and large, a lot of these heresies, these choice elements, come in when we talk about the person and work of Jesus Christ, or about the Trinity, or something along those lines. So... So Irenaeus is, uh, is, focused on, is focused on a defense of the faith, but in a way that is uh, a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more offensive. He wants to defend uh, Christian faith by proving false the heresies, okay, these choices of belief that differ from what the church is teaching. Uh, Christians have the scriptures and the teachings of the church, and that ought to guide what it is that they believe. And so this choice of other doctrine, besides what he considers to be right doctrine, orthodoxy, again, right belief, uh, is what he's arguing against. And he wants to prove that those choices are actually making false choice. And they're not, they're not then Christian. This is, this is Irenaeus' position. And so anybody who would deny some of these very critical teachings, he would argue is committing heresy to the point where their belief is leaving Christendom, okay? Uh, and so his argument is, if it doesn't belong to the teachings of Scripture or the teachings of the church, and really for Irenaeus, the teachings of the church is how we know the teachings of the Scriptures, okay? And, that, and that's what leads to this, this next idea for him, which is apostolic succession. Irenaeus is the first 
to really fully outline for us the succession of the teachings and the succession of the apostles from Peter down to Irenaeus' own day. And then the church is going to continue sort of following this line out of these individuals stand after the apostles in the succession of the teaching of the church. And so the argument is, uh, from Irenaeus, what we teach now as the church is what was taught to us by the apostles. And they entrusted church leadership with the task of passing that teaching on. So those things that are taught in contradiction to what the church teaches are actually in contradiction to what the scripture teaches. We know what the scripture teaches because we know what the church teaches teaches okay so you you can't argue from the scripture in Irenaeus's mind something theologically that is in conflict with the theological teachings of the church the two go together okay and so the scriptures that belong to the church are interpreted and taught in church tradition in church teaching, sometimes explicitly from scripture, sometimes expounded on, sometimes expanded on, but we know what the scripture teaches, according to Irenaeus, because we know what the church teaches, and the church is the teaching body that is responsible for teaching the scripture. So, when he runs into these individuals who are teaching things other than the church, and what the church is teaching, even if it relates back to Scripture, or this person is trying to argue from Scripture that Jesus was not fully divine and fully human. He's not fully God, fully man. Irenaeus will label that as heresy. The choice they have made is incorrect. And so his work against heresies is, is a, a pretty lengthy treatise that demonstrates the faulty belief of these people who are making choice in theology and choosing to believe things that Irenaeus would say are not in the teaching of the church and not in the teaching of the scripture because what the church teaches is what scripture teaches, okay? So he's using the scripture to make the argument, but it's all filtered through the teaching of the church. And this is why for Irenaeus, this idea of apostolic succession is pretty critical because he can trace back to Peter, and the apostles, the teaching of the church, this sort of stabilized theological information, then he can look at the, the choices made by others who are denying the deity of Christ or denying the doctrine of the Trinity, who are making some of these claims, he can look at their thought, at their teaching, and say so on the basis of Scripture and the teaching of the church, this is wrong. And then the church will eventually take steps to condemn that teaching and those individuals will be excommunicated, removed from the fellowship of the church because they are teaching incorrect doctrine. It's Irenaeus who begins to establish for us this idea of right Christian theology and wrong Christian theology. Those heresies and those who have made this choice denying or changing, altering the teaching of particular doctrines in the church, Irenaeus would say, are actually now no longer Christian because they've lost the core doctrine that makes them Christian. Okay? Again, the tracing of that teaching back to the apostles is the thing that allows Irenaeus to make these kind of claims. Okay? Some of you are going to be looking at Irenaeus and the heresies that he's in conflict with. And uh, you'll, you'll sort of begin to sort out how this all works. Now, our last friend uh, in this session is Origen of Alexandria. Okay? Uh, Origen is trained in philosophy. Okay? And uh, he's very well educated. He will be, and he and his teaching will be critically foundational for later church decisions on right teaching, okay, orthodoxy within the church, and what we do with those teachings that could be considered heretical, okay? Um, 
it's really on the shoulders of Origin of Alexandria that some of our church councils, which we're getting to in a little while here, some of our church councils will begin to make judgments about what is proper Christian doctrine and what is now outside the boundaries, sort of leaving the ballpark, if you will, of what is proper Christian thought. Okay? He's been trained in philosophy, and in that philosophical mold, he begins sort of a systematized approach okay, to the teaching of Christian theology okay, that it isn't as, as much as it was for Irenaeus, it's not, it, it's not for, for, for origin here. He's not necessarily about proving wrong these things. Again, Irenaeus is condemning these heretical things and arguing that this is Christian doctrine, this is not. Origen is more about establishing very clearly this is proper Christian doctrine. These are those things in theology that we believe to be true, to be correct, and to be foundational for Christian thought. Okay, And without these things, then we can very legitimately begin to talk about the fact that this is no longer Christian teaching. However, origin is more on the positive side of things. Irenaeus is all about this is not proper Christian teaching and here is why. Origin, on the other hand, um, his, his sort of mantra of attend above all else to the teaching of the scriptures, okay, or, or the reading of the scriptures, is, is about this is where we get our information for proper theological doctrine. And the teaching of the church is in accordance with the teaching of Scripture. Again, he's, uh, he's working on the, on the basis that what the church is teaching is actually what Scripture teaches. Instead of aiming that teaching toward shooting these choice elements in theology down, he's more concerned about propping up what he considers to be right Christian doctrine. And so Origen is establishing more of a baseline instead of a defense. Okay? where Justin Martyr and Irenaeus are about establishing this is right because this is wrong, or they're arguing with somebody, Origen's concern is a little bit more along the line of this is what is correct Christian doctrine and theology. And so these are the ideas that we live by, and everything else outside of that just for Origen sort of becomes automatically incorrect. He's less about putting down or arguing against those other teachings and more about being very clear and very distinct about what is proper Christian theology and doctrine, okay? So one of the things that you get the opportunity to do now as part of your character assignment is actually begin doing the research into these three individuals, okay? And so for this very early section of church history, and Christian theological thought, you're going to be a student of one of these three individuals, either Origen, Justin Martyr, or Irenaeus. And your task will be looking at some of their documents and their thought to figure out very critical pieces of their theology. I've already mentioned a couple in Christian theology that's really important for the early church. The doctrine of the Trinity, for example, the full humanity and full divinity of Jesus Christ, um, and, and some other doctrines sort of connected to those, but th those are our two primary ones that are, that are of critical importance, especially uh, as we begin. Remember that Justin Martyr is primarily concerned with Christianity as a rational faith. It is acceptable rationally to believe these things. Irenaeus is aimed at a defense. Um, these things are wrong theologically. They do not fit within the boundaries of Christianity. An origin is the positive side of Irenaeus. If Irenaeus is shooting things down, this is incorrect. Origin is propping up what is correct. 